It's like a chook raffle where everyone's a winner. And at least one host is a chook. Tonight on About Tonight, writer columnist Clementine Basto. A hot dog showdown. It's Greg Larson versus Jack Druce. And house band Axis of Awesome's Lee Namo. With your host, Michael Hing. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to About Tonight. Uh, this is a television show. Then you know that because you're watching it on television, presumably. Hello, my name is Michael Hing. I'm your host tonight. I'm one of the rotating hosts of this show. And uh, I'm very excited that you're joining us because tonight's show is going to be huge. We have so many guests. Uh, I have a lot of my funny friends involved tonight because I haven't organized much and I'm going to rely on their talents rather than my own because I'm very insecure. Also on tonight's show, uh, the very wonderful uh, writer, comedian and critic critique, uh, Clem Basto will be on the show. Uh, we're very excited about that. We're going to get some Raw Comedy finalists to critique some of my stand-up comedy. And we're also going to be joined uh, by comedians Greg Larson, uh, who you might know from Fancy Boy, and Jack Drews, who you know from stand-up comedy and various other things, to be eating uh, some hot dogs I have prepared and have been sitting here on that table behind me. So it's going to be a great show. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, in the meantime, I thought I might finally introduce the person who you know from The Acts of Awesome, uh, from various things that you would have seen him on, including, uh, is that what is, what is this? What is it? What instrument are you playing? What is that? It's it's the bassoon. Right. Uh, this is Lee Nomo, ladies and gentlemen. Can you play me around the desk? <laughs> I'm very excited about this, Lee. Um, I mean, I'm I am genuinely thrilled that you're here to do the show. Um, but there is some bad news in that uh, you were not originally booked to do this, were you? No. Um, you're a bit of a last minute entry because what happened was uh, I had uh, comedian and guitarist Genevieve Fricker um, who was going to do the show. Jen's a very good friend of mine, we've done a, a bit of radio together and she plays a cool guitar. Yeah. I thought I'd have a cool guitar for the, for the talk show. Um, as it turns out, uh, I, I did think that because you play guitar in the in the sort of famous rock band, The Axis of Awesome, that you would be playing guitar tonight. Uh, you have turned up with a bassoon. Yeah, but you didn't, you didn't specify. I didn't so specify. I just, I just assumed it was artist choice. <laughs> that's not a thing. Do you think that's ever happened before <laughs> where someone has asked someone to be on a show and it's the artist choice in terms of the, like, you know what I mean? Like, that, that's never a thing that's happened before, I don't think. Yeah, but like when... Also, what are you dressed as? Like, why would you... What is that? Is that a, are you dressed as a knight? Yeah, space knight. So this is the space part and this is the knight part. So it's... <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> well, you're gonna have a good time. Yes. Uh, well, I, I also, I Just prepared save the, some- Save the batteries. <laughs> I prepared some questions to ask uh, my musical guest. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, a lot of these questions I've prepared they are probably quite specific to, to, to Genevieve, um, but I, I mean, we, we'll probably just do them anyway because I haven't, I don't know you very well, so I can't really ask you questions. Um, cool. So Genevieve, oh, Lee, what is your favourite part about being a young female stand-up comedian in the Australian comedy scene? Uh, you know, just. Just stand-up comedy. This just there's room for everybody. Girls, guys. You don't have to. You don't have to gender. You don't have to genderize. Just, just give it a go. And that's. I just love giving it a go. Making people laugh. As a girl. <laughs> How was that? That was. All right. Uh, question two. You've often said uh, in interviews that the your least favorite type of comedy is parody songs. Um, specific, and, you, and you note here that the Axis of Awesome are your most hated Australian comedy act. Um, do you want to elaborate on that a bit? Because, um, yeah. Yeah, um, oh yeah, good, good question. Um, I just, I mean, parody songs are just really easy. Like you just take a song and then put other words to it. It's just, 
probably lazy. They just, oh, I just hate lazy, lazy guys. <laughs> Thank you, Genevieve. Um, would you like a cough lolly? I brought cough lollies. Yeah, thanks. Lee, can I ask you, because I was quite excited about the guitar, to be honest. I was excited about having a cool electric guitar and the yeah. like a solo. Like this. And the noise you're making right now is both unpleasant and awkward. Do you know what I mean? And I'm not saying that's entirely your fault. Like you are doing a lot of the heavy lifting just on account of your inability to play the bassoon well. But I think just the bassoon itself is not an instrument that is suited to band. Well, I just think there's a lesson there that you should maybe be more specific. If you want a guitar, just say a PS. You're a guitarist. Why would I? Why, why would I think I? Who? I didn't even know you played the bassoon. Well, why would I assume that you could play that instrument? You should always assume. Mm. That's yeah. Say something and I'll give it like a lick. I'll give it like a cool. All right, boom. all right. Oh, so what about if I do a joke and then you do like a boom, yeah, but on a yeah, yep. Right. Okay. Um, all right, how about this one? Uh, the other day, right? I okay. That wasn't that wasn't really the joke. But I was... you see how that that's the that's the premise though. That like how how do you think comedy works? More, it probably doesn't. All the time. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. All right. Shall we introduce our first guests? Yes. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are super excited about these two people. They are two of my very good friends from the world of stand-up comedy and other types of comedy. Please uh, welcome to the stage the very funny, the very wonderful Mr. Greg Larson and Mr. Jack Drews. <laughs> Just... Hey. Don't, you don't need to... Come on. Hey guys. Just... Is that a bassoon? Yeah. Yeah, it's a bassoon. Yeah. Artist choice. Artist choice. Sit down! Yeah. No, Letterman doesn't have to put up with this shit, all right? When yeah, the guests come out, they sit in mm. fucking chairs, all right? Yeah. The guests also get paid on Letterman. Yeah. No, they don't. They're guests. Yeah, well, I don't know. Well, do, you, do, you, do you get paid when you're a guest? Right. Have you ever been on Letterman? Yeah, so shut the fuck up, right? Even if you're not paid, Letterman's like he's nice to you, mm. probably. You don't know that. He could be a jerk. Yeah. Mm, anyway, yeah. thank you guys so much for coming to do the show. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Um, now, this is something I know you're both very keen on doing. Uh, I've prepared some hot dogs here. Uh, Jack, I know you don't eat meat, so there's some vegetarian ones. Uh, Greg, I know you only eat meat, so there's some meat <laughs> hot dogs. Um, and I'm really excited about this uh, because, I, you know, we've been friends for a very long time, the three of us. Mm. Uh, we used to, we, we lived together for, for a while during the comedy festival. Uh, Jack and I used to do a podcast together. Uh, Greg, um, you're a cool guy. Uh, what I'm really excited about, Greg, is that you've, you know, maybe a year ago, I think things weren't going that well for you. Maybe um, yeah, yeah, things were. You know, you're a bit sad. Yeah, I've, I've had a, I've had a bit of a rough trot from I think around 2002 up until now. Um, but I think, like, I've been feeling, I've been feeling pretty positive. Like, I've actually lost a few kilos over the last couple of weeks. I've been exercising quite a lot. I've been sticking to a diet, I've been calorie counting. That is so positive. And it's, it's, it's been a pretty tough, it's pretty tough road because I, like, I do have a, an eating problem and I just have to admit that, you know, problem. <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah. know why you thought that was appropriate to do that. <laughs> it was a joke, he was, he was making a joke and I just. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Greg? Do you think that, that was well, it? You know, like, there's nothing funny about, um, about obesity. <laughs> Lee disagrees, so... Mm. But despite the fact that you were... I mean, you said your words, obese, not my... I would never yeah. describe you as that. Technically obese, BMI, yeah. Um, but you've made so many steps towards improving your health yeah. and your life. Yeah. Um, you know, your life's together now. You, you got a beautiful girlfriend who, you, who you're living with. You, you know, you, you've got a house to live in. You've got, uh, you've, been, you've been doing some TV work lately that's been pretty good. Comedy's going really well. Your life's together. Uh, and, and I thought the best way to celebrate that would be to, uh, this, uh, well, a hot dog eating competition. Yeah. I'm, I'm upset. 
you know, like frankly, I like I've talked to you about how positive I've been feeling about this weight loss thing, and then you've got me on here for a hot dog eating competition. I think it just shows a lack of respect more than anything. Um, well, yeah, Jack, I think, I mean, it's probably going to be easy for you to win then, isn't it, Jack? Well, see, I feel like this is sort of, I feel like I'm the only one that can win because, like, because Greg's a bigger guy. It's like if he, like, if he wins, he looks like a jerk for even competing against me. <laughs> And then if I win, it's like, well, Jack's the best there's ever been. He's the greatest. Right. Like, this is so in my favor. Yeah, that's true. Whatever happens. Wow. Um, yeah. I, I didn't really think this through when we organized this. But yeah, you're fucked, man. You're Greg, you can't. You yeah, can't. no victory yeah. for Greg. Here. There is no. no there is. Like, best case scenario, you look like a fat shit who couldn't yeah. control what he eats. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's the best case scenario for you. Yeah. yeah you're right. What do you guys get if you win? We, we talked about this before, and I think it would be good if we can, if we host the show and not you. Yeah, like if, if the whoever winner whoever wins gets to host the show. And, and you get deposed from your you know, share of judgment and hate. Yeah. And just and someone. Because like we like the bassoon, we think it's real good. Yeah. yeah. Don't. I like the Space yeah. Night. Yeah. What? I like. Um, and you see, but I don't like what you've done with your desk, like Grumpy Cat. Link. Well, that was the producers. I didn't, I didn't ask for Grumpy Cat. They just the producers did it because they thought it'd be like a cool internet thing. We've got to get the. Look at this. You put that on. You put that on a bloody thing. Everyone's viral. It's viral, mate. Is that vodka behind that? It's what? not vodka. Don't. What are, you, what are you judging me, fat? Okay. No. No. You know what? Yeah. Fine. The winner gets to host the show. All right. The winner right. can take over my. Why aren't you excited? Be more excited about this. This is a well, great I job. I, I told you I've been having a problem with food, and um, I didn't want to come on. That's not my fault. I am excited about this, though. Thank like, you, Jack. Thank like, you. Like this a year ago, this would have been just a fun game with my mates, and now it's like a financial necessity. Like they just, yeah, free hot dogs. Like, what do you mean? Eat as much as I can. Don't have to buy anything today. It'll be awesome. Like, I need this. What are you... No, this is meant to be a grueling ordeal for you, Jack. No, like, I got a job, and I, it sounded like it was just a... Like, yeah, sweet, you got a job. But I think I was, like, a Christmas extra, but they didn't have the heart to tell me. So just no shifts this year at all. Like, I just, oh. I just need these, these hot dogs. Oh, so this is... Wow, so this is... Everything's coming up Jack today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, um, shall, we, shall we get started then, maybe? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Come on. Come on, Greg. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I'm not going to be able to stop myself. I can't stop eating. You know, like that's. Yeah, can, can you just be a little bit more positive, mate? I'm guessing these are the veggie ones? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I expect these are the meat ones. Can you not. I'm just trying. I'm a big guy. It's hard to get my own. Yeah, I got that right. All right, okay, what? Thank you, Lee. There's some mustard. <laughs> there's, a little, there's a little plate. Thank you. You as well. I think there was some bread. I don't know where the bread. Oh, here's the bread. Mm. So, okay. Now, uh, the rules are for this that uh, you have to eat bread and sauce with each one, all right? Uh, we're going to go to a break. We'll be back right after this. Thank you for watching. We'll see you after the break. Goodbye! <laughs> And welcome back to About Tonight. Hello, how are you? Are you well? That's good. Uh, my name is Michael Hing and I am joined on my right uh, by Jack Drews and Greg Larson who, I, who are currently eating hot dogs in uh, competition. Gentlemen, how are you feeling? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, these are real good. Yeah. Can you just are you are you like just try all right? Just put a bit of, put a bit of jazz on it for TV, all right? Well, I'm loving these hot dogs. Thing. Thank you. The sponsors need you to. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> what sponsors? It's fine. We'll do it in the end. Um, and, and and Jack, how are you feeling? Yeah, good. Um, I feel like you guys are going through them quicker than I expected you to. So we may need to get some more later. Are you licking a plate? <laughs> oh my goodness! You are a monster. I just want the fucking chop. All right, 
Well, let's introduce our next guest, shall we? Uh, you would know her uh, from her music mm. criticism, from Channel 31 stuff that she has done, and uh, from her very funny Twitter profile. Uh, please, ladies like and gentlemen, round of applause and welcome like to the stage, Clem Basto! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on the show. You're welcome. Uh, now, when uh, because this is community television, um, when they oh. said Clem would, would like to do the show, I was like, that's fantastic. Um, but we obviously don't have sort of producers and, 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 and researchers here uh, in the way that you, you, know, you might right. like a bigger show. Um, and so I had to stalk all of your social media accounts pretty thoroughly in order to have some questions uh, to chat to you about. And uh, the first thing I saw was that you've recently been in uh, the Tinseltown. Yes. The Hollywood. The, the Hollywood. Los Angeles, the city of angels. And uh, what were you doing over there? Ah, I went over for a bunch of reasons. I went over to uh, be an entertainment journalist. Hello. But also to... Do you mean, when you say entertainment journalist, do you mean like a like a Richard Wilkins type uh, celebrity gossip yeah, type person? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, yeah. okay. And you're, you're a big fan of... Of the celebrity gossip? Oh, I love Richard Wilkins' work. Right, um, okay. <laughs> Richard actually gave me a lava lamp last year. Interesting. That's This is now what the interview is about. <laughs> Why did he do that? I was doing a really stupid real-time art project where I was living in the 70s um, <laughs> for a year. And uh, I went on the Today Show. And after the show, Richard... Some some lackey came up to me and said, "Richard has a gift for you," and it was a he lava didn't even lamp. give it to you himself. No, he sent someone. But he else. went. He, sent... he went to his his office to get this lava lamp. This was in his. So it wasn't like he didn't send someone home. This is a thing he had in no, his professional office. No, it was office. A, it was a Liberation Records Temper Trap branded <laughs> blue lava lamp. And you, do you still have it to this day? I do. Did he sign it or anything? No. Do you think that? Do you think Richard Wilkins' ownership of that? And I don't know the man personally, but do you think that his ownership of that lava lamp increases or decreases the value of that lava lamp? I'd say increases. Increases. Yeah. Um, so what, what else were you doing over in LA? You were there uh, to be a celebrity journalist. That was my work. Uh, the reason I went is uh, I am a screenwriter in my spare time mm -hmm. and I wanted to try and crack the screenwriting industry, oh. which is a very original reason to move to LA. That's a fantastic reason to, to, uh, to, to move to LA. Uh, did you have the big idea? You were just going to go over there and look for inspiration? Uh, I was already working on a couple of things, yeah, and I thought I'd go over and hit some contests. So given and... that you are a professional screenwriter, someone who, <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, like, I am a Writers Guild member. Yeah, yes. certainly, certainly more professional than this guy over here. Right. Uh, can I? Can I pitch what? in? Can I? What? Can you show me? No, it's not about. Just eat the fucking dogs. I'm writing friendship on this one. This isn't about you, right? Yeah, well, I feel like you just Clem's here. Can I have a sauce sandwich? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't you get what do you want? Mustard. mustard? Just mustard sauce. sauce. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> sauce. I sandwich. just wanted this to work. Oh, this is not how it's gonna go. This Are you writing the name? Oh, this is the, <laughs> yeah. this is the greatest day of my life. Yeah, it's pretty good. What, because of that or because of this? Because of that? <gasps> they wrote Clem in it. Oh, I could have done that if you were. It's probably wrecked now. Oh. But sorry, I put the thing on the top. It said Clem. Nah, it's just good that Jack your mates are supporting you on this show. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'll put on this. All right, I have an idea. Mm -hmm. I'm, willing, I'm willing to go halves with you on this because I feel like you bring, you bring the professionalism and the ability to this, but I've got the initial. All right. I'm just I've making sure no one can hear me eating at home. <laughs> it's fantastic. I've got that's very professional of you to do that to come. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have thought to do that. Um, Mic technique. Yeah, I uh, have. So here's my idea, right? Yep. It's a horror film. Okay. Uh, scary type of film. It's a zombie film, right? But they're not zombies. What they are is is actually they're space spiders, right? And what it is is you're. So w when you get bitten, right? Yeah. The virus is actually spider eggs and they go inside you into your bloodstream and they reproduce and then there's just spiders living inside your body and they slowly eat away all your organs and then you're just a sack of spiders walking around and then when you bite someone, they put those eggs in you, in the next person and that's how the zombies get. And it's called Spider Egg Zombies. Mm -hmm. We'll work on the title. Sounds great. Uh, your thoughts professionally on that as an idea? It sounds like an absolute winner based on the quality of the films that get released these days. Oh, well, that seems like more of a, a comment on Hollywood than on... That's fine. Mm. Uh, Lee, I know you're a big... Are you drinking my water? <laughs> well, that, that, that's... Yep. Okay. That's fine. Uh, Lee, I know you're a big fan of, uh, of, of Clem's work. Uh, is there a, a thing you maybe wanted to ask? Yeah. It, when you went to LA, did you go to Medieval Times? The no! <laughs> no, I wanted to. Ah. Um, I did that's... go to Comic-Con dressed in ostensibly medieval clothes. So. Oh, wow. Really? Mm. What was the... Uh, what was the... 
mean, <laughs> you just put so much fun. I'm having fun now. I, like I'm I don't like have fun. I'm like, you're eating all those. You're down to one. I've got one left, man. Well, two left. Huh? All right. I've got really bad bread teeth. Bread teeth? Yeah. What's bread teeth? You know, you've got white bread like stuck around the bottom of your teeth. I did not know that was a thing. Oh, it is. Oh, this is more professional than I'm learning. Mm. Michael's vegan, so he doesn't eat bread. That's. Oh. I am, but that's not how veganism works. I don't. So, can I? Uh, this is this is this is my. I'm going to nail this question. This this is a question that I learned from an interviewer in America about how to interview people. Well, this is going to this is going to be a great question. I'm ready. Um, moving to LA is a big that, that 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 is a big step in anyone's career, and I think it's the dream of a lot of people. And it's a very daunting thing. I certainly myself would not be confident enough to ever go over there and try and make it in a in a scary place like, like the United States of America. Uh, <laughs> Not a joke. Uh, oh, I thought I thought you finished. No, it's uh, you, you'll notice there's a question because there'll be an upward intonation at the end. All right, just look for that. It's an upward inflection. Like, it, can you tell me how did are you eat? Oh God, this Sorry. Is, if it's gonna be fine. It's calm, blue. If how, what did you expect? What like what what were your expectations going in there and your fears and how did your like experience while you were over there differentiate from those fears and your expectations? Oh man, I don't think I really thought it through. I left. I had eight hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I had eight hundred dollars in the bank, um, and I just left. There were a lot of people I didn't tell I was going. I told my family. Um, Coward. I don't know what my expectations were. Probably winning an Oscar instantly. Fantastic. Like most people writing screenplays. Uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. The reality was quite different. Um, <laughs> dating in America was interesting. Ah, you went over there. Did you, did you go over there with the intention of finding love? Well, I thought I would date American style while I was there. What does that, what does that mean? Because I'm also um, terrified of that as well. I feel like everybody's much more cool with online dating over there. Oh. Uh, Whereas over here, it's a, it's a taboo. Well, everyone's very busy in LA. Oh, I see. Uh, but I had some great experiences. There was one guy who messaged me and he was really upbeat and smiling. He said, I just have to know before we talk, do you have big muscular calves? Like, please let me know. Needs to know. And I said, I'm really sorry I don't. And he was like, no, you have a great day. I just looked at your calves then as though I could see and, <laughs> I, and as though I could like make a judgment about your calves from that. And I, I just, if, if the camera picked that up, I apologize. Not it's not a thing that I would usually do, but I was intrigued because I wasn't sure if you were going to say you did or you didn't have big muscular calves. No, you, said, you said you didn't. No, because I don't. Um, How do you know you don't? Like, who knows what their calves uh, are like? I think, I think he meant like, like our crumb woman, like <laughs> you like could crush someone's strength. head. Yeah. Right. And right, do you think that was it? What are you? Just getting a selfie. I just feel like you're really getting on board with this claim in a way that is derailing. What? I yes. Cool. I'm so sorry. No, nah, no, nah, it's cool. I'm just happy you guys are here. Uh, so, uh, muscular calves. Mm. You don't think you have them? It was a disappointment. He didn't message you back. No, he didn't. Um, eventually, I decided that it would be a good idea to try and have sex with Russell Brand because uh, he went to a similar yoga studio to me. So. I went and did Kundalini yoga, which is is the most awful thing in the world. Russell Brand is quite famously a, uh, a recovering sex addict. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. And so did you? So I thought I was in with a chance. Yeah. I mean, were you in with a chance? Or were you just trying to enable him and his addiction in a way that you know? I'd say it was probably all yeah. of the all yeah. of the above. Right. Okay. And <laughs> how did it, how did that go? It didn't go very well at all. Did you um, did you meet Mr. Brand? Did you stalk him? No. Nah, I went to the same yoga studio as him for just one session um, and I was so angry when I got out of there. Uh, but I thought... <laughs> that is not the usual reaction to yoga. Well, I thought a maybe calming that was endeavor. some sort of... That was part of it, that maybe that was the barrier to enlightenment was, was being really mad. And I went back to my normal like grandma lying on the ground with a blanket on yoga class and I was sort of tiptoeing around it because I didn't want to upset my yoga teacher in case... In case they were like, I well, can I, smell I, that I other instructor I didn't want that to be really offensive. And I said, oh, so I went to Kundalini Yoga and she just went, I fucking hate that shit. <laughs> I went, I just heard screaming in my head. So then I knew it was okay that I hadn't reached enlightenment and nor had sex with Russell Brand. But it was a, it was a great time for so, two years. So not from two in mm. terms of the, <laughs> in terms of the And no yoga. Oscar. And no, and no Oscar. And no muscular calves. Oh. That is very disappointing. Yeah. Uh, but you've written all of these uh, experiences into a show. Yeah. I, uh, that I'm definitely segueing towards now. Uh, and you'll be performing that from Wednesday the 25th of March through to Tuesday the uh, 7th of April at Bar Open. Yes. And April the 13th to the 19th, 
uh, at the Imperial as part of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Yes, as part of Comedy Festival. We're very uh, excited. We have a director this time. So <laughs> <laughs> the words that most commonly came up in our very good reviews were things like shambolic and chaotic. So we're hoping that, <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping that Eric can just take it to an, another... I'm going to be honest, I would not know what that's like being described as shambolic or chaotic. No, I can't imagine a, that at all. A bastion of profession. Yeah. More meat. Yeah. Don't applaud. Look at that meat juice. Oh, oh yeah. That's that. Oh, goodness. Uh, so we're going to need to find some more meat. Uh, mm. But before we do that, uh, the last thing we do Ooh. in the segment is just thank the wonderful Clem Basto. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. And uh, we're going to take a break and we'll get some more meat back for these guys. See you soon. <laughs> Thank you so much for sticking with us throughout that commercial break. Uh, Lee, thoughts? Great. We are going to check in quickly now uh, with Greg Larson and much, Jack Drews who are in the midst of a hot dog eating competition. How are you feeling, gentlemen? How much meat do you see on this plate? There's none. Have you fit it? Let's put more meat. This is what winners look plate. like, Michael. <laughs> this is what winners look like. All right. Well, I'm not even next fucking kidding. I want more food. I seriously am <laughs> so next hungry. Next guest is a Raw Comedy National finalist from 2014. Uh, he's a very good friend of mine. Has written for various animations and uh, uh, he's, he has graduated from afters with a master's in screenwriting. Ladies and yeah, gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, yeah. Sarah Spezian. <laughs> oh, dude. Hey. <laughs> Well, okay. I'm sorry, Michael. I uh, <laughs> he drops. I dropped the meat that I brought uh, and the set. Well, um, all right. Just well, let's guys, just though, while we're get rolling, this like out. none of Greg's right. drops. Um, this is a setup. This is sabotage. Uh, yeah, all right, I'll just. Try, I'm, I'm going to try and lift this over your head. My goodness, I invite you onto this fucking show and this is what you do. This well, you know. This is not my fault. Sausage, I guess. Are you going to eat the full one? I don't want to. No, it's... They're chair ones, technically. Do I have to eat the, these ones? Yes! Uh. Well, you're going to sit down now. Yeah. You're going to sit down now and be a guest now that you've fucked up the... No point of crying over spilt sausage. Did you do? Did you do that so you could say that fucking joke? Did you? Did you do that so you could say that fucking joke? We said it was a setup. We set it up. We planned it. <laughs> the uh, smell of the sausages really intoxicated me back there. Oof. I think All right, the actual Cyrus. poisonous no. sausages are intoxicating yeah. me. Eat them. How's your show going, Michael? You mother. Cyrus, I think it's a lovely show. Great. I am. So happy that you are here, Cyrus. Thank ah, you so much for joining you. Thank you. me uh, on this About Tonight show. And I, I wanted to start off by asking you, uh, you've recently been travelling in Iran. That's right. And I, uh, in a conversation recently, you told me that you would be supporting Iran in the current soccer competition which is happening That's in Australia. That's correct. You'll be supporting Iran. And Australia. Rather than Australia. Not rather than, and Australia you as well. You can't support two teams. You can. Pick a side. Dual citizenship. So, you yeah, know, I can do both. That's not part of dual citizenship. Isn't it? No, you get, pick a side. Who are you going to pick? Australia or Iran? Live on national television now, I want you to choose where your loyalties lie, Australia or Iran, which might I add, George W. Bush named as part of the axis of evil. Well, look. Good thinking musically. Great work. I was in the casino last night watching the Australia game, and there was a bunch of racists there. Mm -hmm. And while I was watching, I was like, you know, I like Australia, but. I don't want these douchebags to be happy. So I'm going to go for Iran because I know that the douchebags Can that I met last night. Look at one of these cameras, probably that one right that there. One, that one, okay, yeah. And just say, I, Cyrus Bezian, support the country of Iran over Australia. Can you say that into the camera, please? Because that's good. All right, all right. I, Cyrus Bezian, support the country of Iran over Australia in the Asia Cup in 2014. <laughs> Scandal. Um, Cyrus, what else have you been up to lately? Uh, getting a bunch of free stuff, like these shoes and these sunglasses, and Cormac, 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 no, Cormac, 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 Cormac McCarthy's book, The Road. Uh, I found those things in a bar, 
in a bag, and uh, my friend brought them, thinking they were mine, and left them in my car. That is, this is so far the most boring story. Let me finish. That I have ever. Let me heard. finish. And I accidentally took them home, and that then that includes uh, stories that my elderly relatives tell, and stories that I have mistakenly read on the internet. Well, but I, no, no, go on, please. I have free shoes and free sunglasses and a free book, which I'm not going to read because I've seen the film. So, yeah. is that it? Is that, is that it? No, I, I'll, I'll read the book. I'll read the book. I'm also sure. That I think these shoes what, are like ladies' what, shoes. That what, I'm, I'm not entirely what sure. The, They're a bit too small for me as well. Uh, I was actually thinking of taking them back to the store because the receipt was in the bag and getting a larger size for myself. But if they're ladies' shoes, then, you know, wh what are they going to be What like? are you talking... Can you just say one interesting thing? Just, just have a crack. Just say anything interesting. No. <laughs> Greg, thoughts? This is a bit in the road where, like, a guy eats a baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's intense. I'm still going to read the book, though. So. Someone in Iran need a baby. <laughs> On the road, the book. <laughs> Whose sausages did I drop, though? You, you dropped, dropped mine, and I've just away. finished cleaning them. <laughs> <laughs> cleaning them <laughs> on the towel. <laughs> oh, fuck. Are you all right, Greg? No. Yeah. He's fine. Uh, well, Cyrus, you last year were a Raw Comedy National Finalist. That's correct. And uh, I have done Raw Comedy mm -hmm. before. I've <sighs> never done well at Raw Comedy. And so I was thinking that maybe I could go through one of my sets that I wrote for Raw Comedy, which is a national comedy competition. Uh, I thought that uh, we'd go through my set I wrote back in 2008, and you could give me some tips on how I could use it to get into the Raw Comedy National Final in 2015. All right, fantastic. All right. Uh, Genevieve, if you'd like to... Are you reading a book, Genevieve? <laughs> <laughs> what? No. What are you reading? Is this Willow? Yeah, you were talking about books, and I was like, oh, I just got bored. Is that Willow? <laughs> yeah. <Don't. laughs> All right. You can. Re you you can. are great, Mad Man. Let's just go through. Come on, guys. I want to. I want to do the bit. Let's go. Let's, let's, All right. I gotta go through some of my jokes. Okay. And uh, Greg, you're a comedy professional. Yeah. Uh, Jack, you've done. Oh, we're critiquing. Jack, you've got all the sauce. I took there's some of the sauce. Do you want an intro? Do you want? There wasn't want enough sauce. Well, I can't be a dick. Jack, okay. Jack, Jack. Yeah. Mm, we're frenzy. Up here. Yeah. All, right. all right. So, <laughs> Jack, you've done. You were <laughs> you were a Royal Comedy National Finalist at one point. Yep. Uh, Greg, have you, how, how did you do in Royal Comedy? I go to the state final twice and I was robbed. <laughs> <laughs> I put through a wild card. <laughs> and <laughs> Genevieve, how did you go in Royal Comedy? I uh, yeah, I got to the national final. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so I'm surrounded by comedy Illuminati. Uh, I thought I'd go through some of my jokes. You guys can let me know how you think these could go better or worse. Mm -hmm. All right. So these are jokes that I wrote in 2008 uh, that I'm pretty attached to. All right. Let's give this one. Uh, actually, can you do an intro? You're like, welcome to the stage. All right. Welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Hing. Yay! So good. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, uh, it's great to be here at Raw Comedy. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I don't really understand life, but I am really good at maths. You listen to the premise. You listen to the premise. I'm not really good at. I'm not really good at life, but I'm really good at maths. So for the things where I just don't know what to do, I play a numbers game. For example, when I am at a bar, I don't flirt with single women. I only flirt with married women, right? So this is the, everyone's on their edge. They're like, oh, why would he do that why? for? That's so What's... crazy. Oh. All right. Because, well, I'll let you know why I do that. Because when you flirt with single women, you have to be better than every other guy at the bar. But when you flirt with a married woman, you just need to be better than one guy, the guy who married her. Hang, so hang, 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 I like it. I like hang. it. That's good. OK. That's good. Yeah. Maths joke. Yeah, because of the maths and stuff. Hmm. Because of the what? <laughs> You've got glasses. <laughs> like maths. What, you, what were you saying? I'm saying just saying that you like maths. I'm yeah. just saying. It's it's not surprising <laughs> that you like maths. Why? Why is it surprising? 
For some, for re because you're the smug part. This is why I refuse to support Australia in the Asia Cup. Guys, stop the rage! Guys, fucking Aussie! Oh, goodness. I think I've got meat now. You're doing well, you're doing well. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. You're doing well. I think if he were alive today, Samuel Beckett, famed playwright Samuel Beckett, who's would don't you fucking I think if he were alive today, Samuel Beckett would sue Jerry Seinfeld because Seinfeld stole Beckett's idea for a show about nothing. It's a joke about absurdist, uh, absurdist theatre. So that's a And how did that go at Raw? Yeah, how did that go? I mean it I mean about as well as it went tonight. It's fine. I enjoyed it. I like that. You just didn't laugh. Yeah, but the, 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 the classic not. response to a joke that you like would be to laugh. It's a bit, da it's a bit dated. Back it's a bit old. This was written. And in Seinfeld's, Seinfeld's a bit old. It's written in two thousand and eight, <laughs> two thousand and nine. Yeah. So well, you want, do you want us to update it? Yeah. Well, what, 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 what it's was a the good two thousand and one joke? Replace Samuel Beckett with Miley Cyrus and Jerry Seinfeld with Miley Cyrus. All right. Yeah. I think if he were alive today, Miley Cyrus <laughs> would sue Miley Cyrus <laughs> because he stole his idea for a show about nothing. <laughs> yes! Yes! Genevieve, 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 Genevieve. All right, Genevieve, I'm feeling better about this. All right, <clears throat> this is another joke. Um, don't invite Miss Marple to your dinner party unless you want your guests to be brutally murdered. Who's Miss Marple? Yeah, who is Miss yeah, Marple? Dated again, dated. Okay, so too thoughts smart. On how to, That's too smart. Thoughts on how to update that joke? Well, her, no. Who's Miss Marple? You got to even say like it doesn't without yeah. any context. We don't even know. Miss Marple. Like, she's like a detective. When she turns up at a party, someone gets murdered. and She solves the murder. It's a very famous thing. It's a cultural touchstone. Miss Marple. Does she murder people? No, she doesn't. But the, it's just. You could say. Wait, she's at the party. Someone murders her. Someone Michael, gets murdered because like, she's at the party and she's there to solve the murder. Jokes are good if it's like a twist on reality. Like if you're just yeah. saying that she murders people and she does, that's, you know what I mean? It, she should mm. say someone who doesn't murder people murders well, them. Or you could say if, if, if when Miss Marple comes Miley to the party. Cyrus uh, Miley Cyrus doesn't murder Miley Cyrus people. doesn't yeah, murder yeah. anybody when she comes to your party. Mm. If you say, Miley Cyrus didn't murder anybody and she came to my party. <laughs> if you fucking, yeah. <laughs> Bush. Yeah, yeah. All right. I think, let's try this one. <clears throat> this one. This one actually went well on the night. So think about this. I think the opposite of death is archaeologists. Well, it's right? pretty dark to... It's pretty dark. Mm. That's not the Wait, joke. That's, yeah. that's the premise. Yeah. That's the oh, premise, guys. Even bringing it up, though, is you get into dangerous you remind yeah. people. You remind people of their mortality. Yeah, there could be people who are suicidal who are just ready to just do it at any time. Let him moment. finish. Yeah. I'll listen to your joke, Michael. Oh. Opposite of death. I think the opposite of death, yeah. capital D, capital D death. What is it? Wait, what's a lowercase... Would, Are would, you talking about death, the personification of death? Yes. Oh, right. Yes. Like the guy. I think the I think the opposite of death is archaeologists, right? Because archaeologists are humans. Oh, I've just realised that should be paleontologists, shouldn't it? Even no, then, it wouldn't make any sense. Archaeologists to look at, dig up dinosaur bones. Yeah, bones. It should have been. It should have been. But I'm sorry. It no, but they're paleontologists are dinosaurs exclusively. What what kind of person digs up human bones? Archaeologists. Archaeologists. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, are you so far ahead in this competition that you've like slowed down like the tortoise and the hare? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because archaeologists are humans who hunt for skeletons. Yeah. And death is a skeleton mm. who hunts archaeologists. That should be human, shouldn't it? No. Oh. You've said you've, yeah, the joke is archaeologists. Is it? Are you saying that? I don't know. Or mm. Miley Cyrus. Okay, no, because archaeologists. Well. At least that's a joke. If you say death is a skeleton that hunts humans. Yeah. It's not a joke. Like, you just know what's coming. Hang, um, you said that went well on the night. Like, yeah. on the night, were the audience, like, okay? They were very, they were very generous. Where did you but, like, were they okay? I like that joke. People? That's like, I don't... Joke. What's all right? Just were they all right, like, mentally? I think so. I think they were all right. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? Oh, I just, you said it went really well, and I was just, you know... <laughs> Wondering if, if the reason it went well was because these people were... Where did you place? Different, differently abled. Where did you place? Well, not even that, just maybe they were crazy I, or something. I did not go through. I did not go through, the but, last? but 2015 is the Wait, year. Wait, are you talking about it. state final? No, the hate. The hate. You didn't get through the hate. All right. I feel like we're bullying you. No. Mm. I can't think of a comedian who's like a working comedian. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back after this. Thank yeah. you so much. We'll be back later. <laughs>
thank you so much for joining us on uh, this very special evening of uh, this very special episode of About Tonight. I just spat everywhere. Uh, joining me, as always, throughout the show, uh, uh, Greg Larson and Jack Russo are eating hot dogs. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Whoa. Have you prepared a hot dog into a, some sort of meat puppet now? Don't get hey, that. Bro, get, give, give me a kiss. Oh, just no give daddy a kiss. Don't, don't give mum ma 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 a kiss. Fucking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, I'm one down, but I had to wash all mine. Greg just got to start straight away. Right. So I feel like we're about even. There's a person dry retching in the crew right now because yeah. of the awful things you're saying. Oh. The disgusting things you're both doing. I, I washed them. Um, shall we introduce our next guest, gentlemen? What do you think? Excellent. Yeah. All right. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, you would know him from Raw Comedy, from Stand Up Comedy, and from other great things he has done. Please welcome to the stage, it's okay. Seren Jason. Oh, I fucked up your name. Jayamon? Jayamon? Yeah, Jayamon. We've been friends for years, oh, and I was, I've, I've really... Do you want to do it again? No, it's, no, no, we'll just, we're running around on time, so we'll just, we'll just run it how it is. Right. Are you cool uh, with... Nah, I'm sure it happens all the time with you, because the last name's a bit... Yeah, no, all the time. A bit, a bit all, everyone, all... I just... You should time. probably get up and move. Yeah, do you want if you could. Because so, it's Seren's turn. Same. To just come on. Uh, all right. Thank you. There you go, buddy. So, Seren, uh, you are replacing, and I'll name him. I'll name this person right now. You're replacing Demi Lardner, who didn't show up to the taping today. Yeah. Um, That's right. What's what's going on there? What are you doing? <laughs> oh, I just keep going. You guys are you just you dressed very sim the same. We, yeah, we commented yeah. on that before, actually. Oh, like the same pants. Yeah. yeah. Just, it was like, just the pants. Just the pants. That's Why are you happy about this? <laughs> there's, no, there's no other similarity I, I wasn't, I wasn't happy. in how we're dressed <laughs> other than <laughs> the pants. You both got a microphone as well. That's All right. They, I mean, they, they got those when they got here, though. So they didn't... It's not important. So, Surette, uh I hear that you're going to be uh, hosting one of these. I am, yep. Um, uh, on Tuesday, they've uh, saved the best for third last, I think. <laughs> and so. I just, I don't know if you've been watching the taping today. Have you been watching, you've, you've, been, you've been back Yeah, I was, I was behind there the whole time. I actually yeah. pushed it. Did that you? Was, yeah. And then you hid when it came down. That's why we couldn't see you. Obviously. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen today. Tonight, tonight's show hasn't gone uh, maybe like as, as, as well as I wanted it to go. Um, so there's been some things, some mishaps. Um, mispronouncing names. That's the least of my problems, to be oh. honest. Like, I'm, I'm not even phased. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I just thought I'd give you a bit of advice. Right? Like, like, like an old, like, look at these hands. Look at these hands. They have, I mean, the, these hands. Do you moisturize? Have, no, but they've, they've, they've obviously, I actually did bring some, you want to touch them? You want to touch the hand? Your hands are very softly. They look you have the hands of a bassoonist. <laughs> More than mm. a guitarist. Um, everyone's just touching my hands. Uh, I just, I, I don't know what you've got planned for your show, no. but I thought, like I thought for, my, for this show, I was gonna get my friends on, they were gonna be great, everyone's gonna have a great time. Lee's turned up dressed as a space knight. Hello. Buddy Jack and Greg are, they're taking photos of hot dogs behind me. Video. I've done pretty well. Yeah, actually be quiet for a second, we're just doing a video. Hello, welcome to my show. I'm Hot Dog Face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. It's a wrap. Thank you. Cheers. I really like your pants. Yeah. Thanks, man. Good pants. Yeah, I just, pants. I just, I just, I really like you, Seren, and I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. I don't. No, I don't think there's a chance of that. Actually. What do you? I think it'll be doing? fine. Um, what are you doing? What are you doing for your show? I'll, how about you tell me what's going on in your show, and I'll tell you how it can go wrong. We've booked uh, exclusively Anglo-sounding names, uh, <laughs> so it's. <laughs> Very easy to pronounce all the names on the show. Yeah, well, that was uh, my, that was my trouble. Yeah, that was my, my trouble is I am a racist, <laughs> and that's always been my issue. I'm sorry. Um, so, I, so I, who, who is going to be on your who is going to be on your show? Uh, we've got uh, the puppetry of the penis guys, which is very exciting. So there's going to be dongs, dongs on. Yep. Doing. Uh, I may oh. eat. No, I won't. I definitely won't be. Are you going to give it a crack? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not ready for the world to know. Uh, is the world ready to see your penis? I don't think so. No. Okay. I don't think so. Right. Puppetry thereof or otherwise. I, yeah. Uh, so just you're puppetry of the purely, penis. Just purely because of lighting, right? Like, okay. Well, here's I what's going like to go wrong with that. And one. You get, they go, oh, I'm going to make the Eiffel Tower out of my balls. Oh, look at this. It's a pelican. Oh, look at that. It's a bloody her. Uh. And then, you know, one of them has a heart attack. <laughs> Could happen. Couldn't it? A heart attack? Yeah. 
from Good. all that excitement. Yeah. Playing mm. with your junk. Yeah. Could happen. No, he does. No, he doesn't. I'm just, I'm just like saying that's a thing that could happen to anyone. Yeah. It's not a joke. It's just a thing. Buddy, Jack and Greg are Hello. They're taking photos of hot dogs show. behind me. Video. I've done pretty well. Sorry. Actually sorry. You're I'd, not. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a show within a show. I don't know. Is Jen freaking gonna be there? Uh, yeah, I think so. Don't, what are you interviewing him for? What <sighs> no, I've tried Wixie so what? hard <laughs> to make this a good show. I have, I have made so many efforts, you know, went out and got the hot dogs. Thought no, my friends would come in the here. The producer got the hot dogs. <laughs> Did you know that Grumpy P Cat makes more money than Gwyneth Paltrow? Cat! Than Gwyneth Paltrow, it's amazing. Really? He made like two hundred million dollars last year. Grumpy Cat made two. That's a lie. That that's is what a I lie. Heard. That's what I heard. Like that's, from that appearances, that is a full lie. And um, merchandise. I have tried so hard to make this a good show, and obviously it's 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 not worked out. I'd like to apologise to um to Channel Thirty One uh, and um every, the viewers at home. I'd like to apologise to um. Well, I don't know. Just my parents. They're going to be really disappointed about how this turned out. I thought this was going to be you know be a big break. This is going to be like, you know, maybe, maybe someone from Hollywood would see this. That's why Clem, Clem Basto is on the show. She's got a lot of Hollywood connections. You know, she comes on the show. I go to her, hey, <laughs> how's it going? And then she goes, oh, come to Tinseltown. You'll make it big. And now look at this, you know? Stuck here. This fucking idiot. <laughs> hey. Are you... F that's... Oh, he's making a family. You, have you stopped eating the hot dogs? I'm making a family out of the hot I'm dogs. I'm real sick. Yeah, I've got to. All right. Well, let's like, just, let's just you, declare you, a winner then. Which one of you? Who's? who's um, who? I would say, like, honestly, look at this: three hot dogs, three hot dogs. Yeah, to tie. I think the real the real winner is a friendship between me and Greg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So do you think? What? Well, so friendship takes over the show then? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Me, well, the best friends. Me, yeah, the two best friends take over the show as a representative of friendship. Yeah. Right. Would well, you want to do it from there? Or you want to do it from here? Well, we'll do, do no, it from, from there. there. Like yeah. obviously, we're taking it on the show. Well, come on, I don't. Yeah, yeah, but if you're gonna, you can like, be a we, guest. You can come out we, from the thing. All right. We, well, you introduce. All right. Thanks everybody for coming to the show. We've hey guys, got welcome to About Tonight with uh, Jack and Greg, the hot dog boys. <laughs> yeah. Back at it again. Oh look, let's just run to a quick sketch. This is Hot Dog and his boy. <laughs> hey, I'm going to the, to the... Which camera am I going to? This one? Is that a camera? I'm going to the bank. No, I'm going to get ya. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy and Daddy Hot Dog. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, well, welcome to our show. Very next guest, special guest. Well, where, where is Man, he from? Man, you've seen him on Raw Comedy. Welcome to the stage, famous mathematician Michael Hing, everybody. Michael Hing, everybody. Hey, everyone. All right. Yeah, yeah. So good. Um, so good thanks, thanks, Michael. Yeah, I, thanks for joining us. We're going to go to a break. So thanks very much, guys. We'll see you soon. Yes. Hey! <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back from the break. As always, we are Jack and Greg. Uh, joining us on the show today, we have a special guest. Uh, please welcome to the show, Mr. Sausage. Oh, hello, I'm Mr. Sausage. Oh, how you doing there, Mr. Sausage? Oh, pretty good, but I'm a little bit lonely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking for a lady I can meet. <laughs> 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 oh, all right. Well, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, enough comedy for now. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Michael Hing. Um, so I, I just thought that I, I would, would try, I'd try and do uh, my raw set from a couple of years ago, and because um, I think the, the jokes that you guys we went through it during the break, and mm -hmm. I think uh, this is quite funny now. So I'm just going to do it, and uh, this is going to be my. I'm doing it on TV. It's going to be great. All right. So. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's begin, shall we? All right. Um, so, uh, I, I think that somewhere out there, there's a vampire uh, who writes shitty books about how strange Mormons are. Because they don't drink coffee, and they have magic glasses, and some of them practice bigamy. And that's a joke about how um, 
<laughs> That's a joke about how like the person who wrote uh, Twilight is. I think I think she was uh, like religious and and it's just like you, you, it's all about how weird vampires are, but like that's not okay. Um, I think good, Hing. it's strange that Captain Planet's purpose is to fight pollution, but uh, his one weakness is uh, is pollution. Uh, that'd be like if Matthew McConaughey's one weakness was having my my girlfriend fantasize about him while we have sex, uh, or if my girlfriend's one weakness was being a thing that I invented for this joke. That that joke was written a couple of years ago, and I have a girlfriend now, so it's it's fine, and I'm I'm doing, I'm doing fine. Uh, detective. I think that uh, the rise of allocated seating in in movie theaters is directly proportional to the decline of blowjobs oh, in movie theaters. Yeah. Uh, because you can because they put you at the front, and then you can't uh, like suck them. Hey, is this your is this your diary? That's my that's my mostly yeah. jokes, but there's some. Do you want some? Because there's some jokes here. I could just that's, don't read that. Don't read probably that. fresh jokes. That's so not a joke. That's a that's a poem okay. I wrote. That okay. Well, can I, I just? That. But just to contrast, just so the viewers can see how far you've come. So you know, you've got that Matthew McConaughey one. That's like what 2008 or so. And then you've got he's written, uh, I am an asshole. Uh, I am worried. I have no more ideas. Please don't do this. Uh, so you said no more ideas. That's good though. It's like you had ideas. Just, um, is, yeah. this a, is this a po is this a poem about your fears? I'm worried. I'm a hypocrite. I'm worried. I am self-indulgent. Well, you should be. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm worried. I'm going to hell. I'm worried that I do nothing but nothing to what? I don't. You can, you yeah, we can't. I'm, I'm worried that you don't have a particularly legible hand. Yeah. Uh, guys, <laughs> come on, don't, don't read the, don't read the Oh, oh it's, it's connected. It's I'm doing nothing to make make guys the world a better place. The, make the world, I'm worried about climate change. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nerd alert! Um, I'm worried about poverty. Don't read my poems. <laughs> it's just oh, okay. No. It's not rhyming. There's no rhyming. It's there. not a rhyming poem. It's about my feelings. All right. It's yeah. just a thing I wrote because I was genuinely afraid about some things that were happening in the world. You, you don't even look. Just to make it rhyme. It's not about rhyming, it's about the things I was genuinely afraid of doing. I'm worried about sweatshops, I'm worried about climate change, I'm worried about poverty, but I do fuck all, and my work is meaningless, because that's what this is, right? I'm doing this TV thing, it doesn't even matter, I don't even know what I'm doing, and, and, I, th and I thought that my, my genuine human emotions would try and interact with the audience, I thought they would <laughs> maybe just yeah. deal with... You don't even... No, no, yeah, that was the, the poetry police. Poems have to rhyme. Yes. You know Sucked what? in, man. You know what? Sucked in. You've taken. You're not taking this away from me. I've. I've just thanked the guests. So you need guys need to go now. I've had enough of this. Yeah. It was fun while it lasted, but get out of here. Can I keep these? Vote Liberal. Vote LNP. Don't. Malcolm Turnbull's going to shut this place down. Shut the. <laughs> you shut up. Good on him. You shut up right now. Don't listen to like. Don't shut this down because that's what we miss. Look, See, we're doing I great am, work here. I Everyone. Am, I'm worried. Shut I'm, the fuck. Going to hell. I am worried I won't Welcome do well. Welcome to the stage, Greg well Larson in hell. and no. Jack Drew. Hi, right. hey, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. uh, well in hell. Just <laughs> Thank you so much for tonight. Please join us on Monday when Auntie Donna will be doing an Australia Day party. It's going to be huge. 10.30 on Channel 31. Uh, my name is Michael Hing. Uh, I would like to thank Lee Nabo, Saran Jaiman, uh, Cyrus Spezia, Greg Larson, Jack Drew, Clem Basto, and Demi Lada, who didn't show up. Thank you and good night. Ha 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 ha